the uh, person that sends you constant emails. <laughs> So I should introduce myself. Uh, so many of you know me, but probably not all ab about uh, me. Some of the members of the club and some of my friends. But uh, my name is Carol Cameron, and I've lived in San Jose my whole life. And I do like to travel to um, Europe and Scandinavia. I've been through many places in the world, but I still live in San Jose, the place of my birth. And. Um, I studied industrial design at San Jose State, and I worked for, um, some of my friends here are from my days at Atari. I worked for 18 years for Atari Games, coin-operated division. And then I went from there to Lockheed Martin, so I kind of went from working on space games to you know space vehicles. Uh, so uh, that's kind of my background, and I, came to, I knew, always knew this uh, organization was in the neighborhood, and then uh, I got fed up with the working, and so I quit my job, and so I joined the group, uh, you know, as a way to meet people and uh, have a new activity, and so, um, and then they begged me to become president, and then I stupidly went along with it, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, one of the fun things about studying industrial design at San Jose State is that industrial design is half in the art department and half in the engineering department. And so, you know, I was studying the engineering part for work, but, you know, I took, was taking more and more and more fine art classes. And so I got involved with a lot of uh, the San Jose State fine art department. I studied uh, a lot of photography extensively, but I found myself, I kept trying to make uh, 3D objects out of photography. So I go to critiques and everybody had a, you know, a matted uh, photo, and I come in with something and plunk it down the table. There's my photo, so you know, I, I can't seem to get away from making um, objects. And uh, I'm trying to turn myself into a, I'm trying to make myself a painter, but I don't know if I really, it's a struggle. I'm not really a painter. But one of the things I wanted to talk about, and I brought pictures of, uh, two things, you know, it's like, okay, so this looks all very crafty, right? And so, um, I, I promise you I won't talk long, we'll get right into this. <laughs> but I want to talk about, art versus craft. And so people might think, well, paper mache is craft. That's not really art, is it? And I think that there's a real place in art for whimsy. <laughs> and also, uh, I think you're finding a lot, lot more artists are working in everyday objects. Objects that are in your everyday environment and you pay no attention to them. And they, of course, they intrigue me because I, my study of industrial design, but, um, so I got into making appliances and stuff, but um, I brought some examples, like, you know, for, uh, you can't see this very well, but if you're all familiar with like Jeff Koons or the balloon dog, right? And we have Klaus Oldenburg, right? He made the gigantic uh, spoon and cherry that's in Minneapolis. And of course, you know, Duchamp started it all with a urinal, right, in like 1930 or whatever. And of course, I love William Wakeman and his dog. Right? So people think, well, it's William Wegman to be an artist. He's photographing dogs. But it's all about intention, right? So uh, that's, that's what I want to talk about. And I looked up the uh, origins of paper mache. It goes all the way back to China into the, I have it written down here, the Han's Dynasty, AD 220. And then went from China to Japan to Persia. So uh, kind of spread to the rest of the world. And one of the ways I got started with paper mache, lastly, is that uh, some of my uh, friends and employees were getting married, and one thing I absolutely hate is a wedding registry. Like, it's so impersonal. You click a button, and they get three serving spoons to match their, you know, like. <laughs> and when I grew up, like, when you got married, people gave you appliances, like toasters. So I started making toasters. So some of my friends returned it to me. So this one is actually a wedding <laughs> gift. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Some of your friends returned them? Yes, these have been returned to me so for the for tonight. Oh, oh for tonight. Oh, okay. They still have them. So this is one of my employees. She got married. And this is a picture of her and her husband getting married. 
and then they went on vacation to Italy. So this was their wedding gift, and it's got you know little toast and stuff. So I kind of got started on um, on making toasters, and then I went from toasters to irons and, and blenders. And uh, this was also a wedding gift for my friends Bob and Kat that got married, and they had gotten this kind of sad looking dog, and so I made them this dog for their wedding gift. So anyway, we can. When we break up, to work, we uh, spend more time looking at that as you like. So, the reason I wanted to have a demonstration is because I think we all know how to make paper mache. We we uh, we learned when we were kids, but the way we learned is we had this gothy uh, wallpaper paste, and we would tear up pieces of newspaper, and the newspaper would get all over the place. And I don't even remember what we put it over, how we made made the piece to start with, but. Um, I so oh here's I I would have made a slideshow if I was working so I made some photographs here so the first poster I made you can come up and look later is this one here and I wanted it to be curved like that so I put toilet paper rolls on the corner and I use a capri you know all this capri sun cardboard here you know to bulge it out and so the finished piece looked like this and you know it did look pretty good. But then I discovered sculpting styrofoam. Uh, this was the next one I made. And so you can see the difference between you know, this typical cardboard armature versus uh, sculpting the foam. And so then I went on to, uh, to this one here. Um, and so that's what we're going to do tonight, because we can't slop around a bunch of paper and shape. But we can make an uh, armature. And I think we're all going to make a little bird. Unless you don't want to make a bird, you can make anything you want. And it, of course, it doesn't have to look like a bird. Um, <laughs> so I, I don't know where to start. So a couple of years ago, there was this older gentleman that was making paper mache. And he told me, he's like, oh, forget. His, his paper mache was so smooth, the finish of his pieces. And I'm like, how did you do that? And he goes, oh, I use shop towels. And I'm like, what? I mean, this blew my, this changed my whole life. So these things are very fabric-like, right? And they have, they don't fall apart when you put them in the paste. And they're very malleable. And here's what they look like when you tear them up, right? They don't tear. I mean, you can tear them, but you have to really work at it. And they definitely have a grain to it. And so I learned, like, to tear them, you can only tear them really in this direction. If you try to make these gems in this direction, it won't work. So I'm going to have to see me. So instead of tearing, normally you'd want to tear it toward you, but what I found is, is to take a little piece next to you and then you tear away like that. You get a really nice little strip. Right. So. so this is the secret. We can all go home now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also I used to buy wallpaper paste like this and you kind of have to you make some, and then it's too thick, and then you add it more water, and then it's too thin, and you add it in, the end, and, then. and so now you can buy stuff pre-made in pockets. This is the product that I got at Lowe's, and this brand I got at the uh, Ace Hardware Store. So uh, it's just called Universal Wall Covering and Border Adhesive. Great, and so. That's one way of making paper mache. Another way is to buy a product like this, which is, this one's called Cellu Clay, and this one, Sculpt Mold, but basically it's paper pulp that already has some sort of paste in it. You just mix it with water. The only thing is, this stuff is really heavy. So this, one, this is why I made, I made all this stuff in the last week or two, it's crazy. So, this armature here, which is basically wood and dowel and wire, this can hold up to this heavy stuff. But if I were to put this on this paper, it would just, uh, you know, it would be too much for it. It would all fall apart. So, so this is great for, so this is what, um, oh, sorry, I'm moving. Yeah, okay. But this one here, when you come by, it's very heavy. And this is made out of this stuff. So you can see the difference. And actually, I have a picture of this armature right here. It's also wood. So, 
So what I do for a lot of things, I, uh, oh, so this one, I saw this online, this dog. So that's kind of what I use as a model for making this. A downward dog, a downward bulldog. And then uh, I was in Michael's buying styrofoam and I saw this truck on the side of a box. And I thought that was really cute. So I thought, well, I'm going to make a truck because, you know, I love trucks. So I made this out of um, layers of styrofoam. So you can buy blocks or pieces like this. So what I use, I use this mostly. And I didn't bring it tonight, but I use a hot melt glue gun. And so I just start gluing layers of this together to build it up um, so that I can get something like this. And then what I do is, uh, you know, you can cut it with your handy dandy little uh, saw. Works well. Or, um, and then for uh, sculpting it, I use like a rasp. Just, uh, it makes a big mess. <laughs> but um, what I what I I ordered some styrofoam on Amazon. Oh, it was great! I don't even have to go to the store. And it was it was advertised on Amazon as craft foam, but when it came, it was polystyrene versus styrofoam. So this would work great for making an armature if you're building it up and stuff. But you all know what happens when you break the ends of this stuff. Can have a lesson on static electricity. <laughs> um, so. But what you're going to see here on the table is literally you can use anything. I mean, you know, you got all this free cardboard, this thin cardboard stuff that comes in t-shirts or stuff. It's great. And uh, Amazon, you gotta love them. They said you're this paper, right? They said this is the greatest paper. Um, so, and then. Um, I have various wires. Uh, I think you just, I've had this for years. This is called baling wire, you get it at the hardware store. And then um, this is florist wire. And this is really good for, uh, I use this on the puffin to make the leg thicker and put multiple layers of wire and then I wrapped it up with this uh, florist wire. And then, since I love to weld, I have welding wire at my garage, so uh, welding wire is good to use, it's very stiff, you can use that. This is an example, is everybody taking notes and it's going too fast? I, I was actually gonna make a material list to hand out to everybody, then I realized that you can really use anything in the world, so it's kind of be a wild material list. So the piece that I made this week is that puff in there, it's still kind of wet. <laughs> And so I started out making the puffin, and I decided, oh, I'd be smart. I'd use this expensive, stuff's expensive, uh, aluminum sculpting wire to make the legs instead of cheap uh, wire from a, a wire hanger. But then I found it's just too soft. And then I realized that it was never gonna hold up the weight of the puffin. So I took some pictures of the puffin in process here. So. Here's the legs, so I started with the new legs that I used, and then uh, this is, as I was, um, built up the layers of foam, I made the nose, the beak with wood, and that little tail with cardboard, and, uh, and then I ended up strengthening these legs, and I actually put um, two weights in the foot, in the feet, uh, so I hot melt glued some pieces of metal on the feet, uh, so that I'd have more of a base uh, for that. So, so this is my failure. Um, I used to do a lot of, when I had the opportunity to use the foundry at San Jose State, I did a lot of bronze work. And actually I would make bronze pieces completely out of masking tape. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you this too. So this is a fun thing to do while you're watching television. You just take some masking tape and scrunch it all up you know, on during the ads or something, and next thing you know, you have a figure. So I made this little seated little chair. <laughs> so this is something that I could cover with the blue towels and make a nice uh, paper mache, or I maybe I don't know, or leave it the texture that it is and paint it. So, so oh, uh, you know, it's just I 
won't be sculpting foam tonight, making a big mess. Maybe we can have this class over again outside sometime, and then we can. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you know, so long. You know, I just, I just start. You know. You made paper in your one. Huh? You made paper in your one. Oh yeah. <coughs> you know, before you know it, you just, you just. I don't know. Maybe this is going to be a. Well, maybe this will be a bird. I don't know. But anyway, as you can see, you just. Um. I did this over a piece of wire, so there is a wire inside there. But anyway, masking tape is great stuff. Um, and another material I use, this is, this is for your gutters. This is an expanded uh, aluminum, and so this is really good. You can just bend this into anything. So this is really good. And then um, Julie gave me permission to quit, but I was starting to sculpt a uh, turtle out of a piece of <laughs> floral. This florist foam has a good density. It's really easy just to cut with a, um, just to cut with a knife. You just, oop, just cut the piece right off. So, uh oh, he went his leg. But um, <laughs> yeah, just making smaller. So what I thought we could do tonight? Oh, oh excuse me. Let me step back a bit. I was in the shower two nights ago, and I was two days ago, and I was thinking, wow, I could bring some plastic bottles. It's amazing what you can make out of a can, right? You can leave it this shape. You can jam some wires in it to make some legs. And you can have a face of any animal or a bird. Or you could, you know, I don't know, you could start like, you know, before you know it, you have to, uh oh, well, anyway, there you go. You know, you start making something and then uh, tape that up. Before you know it, um, you get a pretty good figure going. And by the time you cover it with paper mache, no one has any idea how you made that shape in the, the first place. So the reason we're having this little demo tonight anyway, because the hard part of paper mache is not putting the paper mache over the top. It's how to figure out what you've made. And if you want to make it large, how can you make it stand? And so. Um, I want to make something larger than some of these pieces, but um, you know, so I think I'm working towards something uh, larger. Um, but I just like making uh, three dimensional materials. So, anyway, so um, what was I going to say? Oh, so what we want to do tonight, I think, is um, make something like a bird. Now it doesn't have to be a bird, but um, there's a lot of wire and some pliers and tape. And um, I suggest, but you don't have to, is to start and make yourself a leg like this, perhaps. And uh, actually, have the music going to the side. two ways here. I think you might be able to just start with newspaper and make a figure or form that you want. Right? And later, if it's something that has legs, you can jam legs in, right? Which might help you put the legs in the right place. Or, you know, you can just kind of start making legs like this and just kind of like, you know, I don't know, just kind of, you know. So this is how the, we made these pieces here. I was at my friends Betty and Eileen's for dinner on our, our usual Sunday night. And so after we had dinner, we just made little, we made these birds. So I made this little bird here. And uh, Betty in the back made this crazy figure here. And I took it home and I, I added the uh, paper mache to it. And she uh, created quite a challenge for me because she just had single pieces of newspaper out the back. <laughs> And no way would that support paper mache. But what I did do, though, is I, I took some wire. I took some uh, baling wire and some of the florist wire. And I poked it in here, and I made a structure for each one so that the feather back would have a structure. And then I used a lot of hot melt glue to kind of fill in. That's an industrial designer's trick, is that you, know, you can make anything out of hot melt glue. You can just use it as a your only source, right? You could just melt it, keep melting it into a figure. And then uh, these little hands were a single piece of 
thin uh, cardboard like this. And so I, I made a little structure underneath here and glued it on. And I glued on a little structure here to hold it together. And it's a little uh, baseball cap bird. <laughs> and I think the, it is a bit. And I think the fun part is, that, you know, back to art versus craft. Your bird doesn't have to look like a bird. It doesn't have to look like anything, right? You can do whatever you want. So, and uh, my friend Eileen back there, she made this little piece out of newspaper, and then uh, I brought it home and, and covered it up. So what I wanted to do here tonight was for you to see the various stages, um, you know, pieces, right? So, so anyway. You know, I think I would have thought to tear up some newspaper ahead of time. about it going any which way, right? You know, and as you're doing this too, you can kind of start checking in to see whether you think it'll stand up, right? Okay, and if it doesn't, oh, it's still standing. Look at, it's looking pretty good already. Look at that. <laughs> Shorebird. Yeah, it's a shorebird. I don't know. Here, oh, this uh, this rice container already has this nice little arc here. As we used to say in the drafting days, strike an arc. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you can wrap it around and under it, hold it up. Okay, I've made it really long. It's an ant. It's an anteater. Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Where's the picture? what we're going to do. How much time do we have? Okay, so uh, we're coming up 
why don't we give ourselves, oh, let's stop before we start, uh, before I go. How about questions? Does anybody have any questions? Oh, here's here's uh, cotton rope and an old plug. Uh, this is um, uh, this is my favorite part is make because you know I did electrical work at my work. so this looks like wire, but it's actually pieces of rope that I painted uh, for the wire and. Uh, I'm painting it with acrylic, yes. Yes. Of course, here's some styrofoam balls. So, I think it might be good if you want to. Um, you know, I made it look easy, but it took me a while to figure out how to tear these into strips. If you want to uh, try that here tonight, and if anybody needs some of that. And, um, yes. So, how can you make the shape of the bird? Yes, so and this is uh, to your liking, which of course it's perfect. <laughs> um, then I, uh, I'll take the strips of this uh, paper mache, right, and open one of these buckets. And you, you dip it in the goop. You might want to put on gloves, it can be a mess. Um, that one's empty. This one just kind of looks like PVA glue, kind of. Actually, it kind of smells like you did glue. I think that's actually a major component. I was looking at it, it didn't want to say what it was, but it's got a high uh, concentration. So this is more uh, old-fashioned wheat paste. It's like little uh, flakes. Um, but uh, so this is what I used before I, you know, actually the only time, I just started using that. So the first one is this stuff and uh, these pieces here. But all the older pieces, I use this uh, wheat paste. And, you know, it dries pretty hard. Yeah. So I'm not sure if maybe this is a better solution or not, but um, this is called multi-purpose wall size and adhesive. You can come take a look at it. But it's like a... Powder? Huh? Powder? Yeah, it's like... Do you add water to it? Yeah, you add water. Oh, this one's very granulated. I had another one very flaky. Yeah, it's just like cream of wheat. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this might be more a little bit more organic, but uh, so it's good. I mean, in the old days of paper mache, people would just make their own. They'd go to the kitchen and get some uh, yep. flour and yep. water and whatever. Um, I'm pretty sure you could probably just take some PVA glue and water it down and have it pretty close to this, but this wasn't that expensive. I actually ended up buying a good gallon jug of it too, because I went through this rather quickly. But anyway, so my mistake, I just kind of assumed everybody knew how to make paper mache, but you know, you dip this in the, in the whatever fluid you have, and it gets all gloppy, and you, and you, you work it down between your fingers like this. Right? And then try to get a lot of it off, and then uh, start shaping this onto your piece. And sometimes a big long piece is good, and other times, you know, you oh, I just want a little piece, right? And once it's on here, once it, this one's still drying. Once it's on here, you can really push and shape it while it's wet. Uh -huh. And it takes a couple days to dry. Um, but that's the, that's the beauty of the shop towels, because it's, you know, like I said, there's, I don't know what's in, it's very fabric-y. Um, so this really, really changed the whole game for me. This is so much easier to work than trying to put um, newspaper. Yeah, the traditional way of making paper mache would be take the newspaper and put it in your glue. So after it dries, you can hand acrylic on it. Yeah, yeah. So I just finished this one <laughs> two days ago. I probably painted it before it was really hard enough, but anyway. So yes, so this was my first attempt. And then uh, here's, here's the uh, carved foam, and here we are the finished piece, so. And I think it's pretty darn cute. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, last quarter, our quarterly challenge was coffee and tea, so then I made this uh, this piece of latte. I didn't see you come in. I snuck in. <laughs> this is my friend. 
So, um, and then I wanted it to make look coffee-like, so I used um, self-leveling gel, and I poured it in there, let it dry, which I've used before. So it made like a clear gloss, so it looked like fluid. And then uh, I didn't want really want to paint over it after I had it looking so glossy. But anyway, so this was my little duck. My favorite coffee company, Starbucks. So yeah, so this one, this armature is a mixture, a mix, lot of mixture of things, wood and wire and sorts of stuff. And this is all wood and wire. So. Yeah. And this one, uh, this one's going to be, I made this one, but you know, I'll have a little bit of challenge to make these wings, you know, hold their uh, shape, but I can figure that out. And then I was worried that maybe the, the, the pasted uh, strips wouldn't stick that well with the masking tape, but it really does. The one thing I tried was uh, I have a can of uh, photo mount spray adhesive, and so I had a test piece and I just sprayed it with the spray adhesive and let it dry, which made the whole thing kind of tacky. And then that was really good uh, as a base uh, for the paper mache as well. So my overall message is you can make these out of anything and you should be making them all the time because they're fun. When you're ready to paint, do you do a layer of gesso first? Oh yes, okay, thank you. It's a great, thank you for that question. So yes, I put like two layers of gesso on before I paint. And it's kind of a warning because you let this dry and it's hard and you're ready to go, but of course the gesso has a high water content. So it kind of re-softens it. So you have to be really careful when you put the gesso on, you know, because all of a sudden like, oh, I thought this was hard and all of a sudden it's moving on you again. So, but yeah, two good layers of gesso is and let that harden um, uh, before you paint. Yes, and I've never put anything over the paint Probably should some sort of clear coat, but um. so people who do life size machetes, how much of the inside is empty? Like they cannot see the whole thing, so they, it's all armature. Then, right? yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. You can build a pretty big, like wooden armature or something uh, to hold up something big. Um, the next thing I really want to explore is making food items. <coughs> I was thinking about making a big cheeseburger or something. Um, so that one's kind of a joke. I had this, I didn't make that. That's a wooden bagel. I used to have it on my desk at work and it drove people insane. They'd come <laughs> in my office and they'd be talking to me and they'd keep seeing it in the corner of their eye. And they're like, can you get rid of that thing? I'm like, no, I like it. Because <laughs> it's, it's really annoying because it just looks like you want to grab it and eat it. <laughs> so, but, uh, but yeah, things really changed for me when I discovered uh, styrofoam and discovered these shop towels. So that's the real secret. And I haven't used this stuff in a really long time, and I think I have a bunch of it. I think I should uh, maybe explore that again. Oh, I did discover too when I went to Michael's that this is not very uh, nice thing. But anyway, this is actually a special piece. I was going to make the wheels, and I was going to cut little circles, which, you know, I could have done, but then I'm like, oh, Michael's, this is actually like cemetery foam. It just fits in those little oh. cemetery flowers. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, first I was making the truck and I made this for the back. And then I realized I had the scale all wrong and I'd already glued it on. So I was trying to like rip it off. Um, so, but yeah, I, I think this one's gonna be fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this one. Because um, I had the little photo. Yeah. The photo I started from had cute little fruit in the back and a little. So I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this up with paper mache, and then I'll probably make a little wooden rail, and then I'm gonna make some little stuff to go on the back. Um, yeah. So I did a lot of when I was studying industrial design. I learned from some great people at Atari Games that were very good industrial designers, and then I went back to school. Um, so I did a lot of model making, and I thought I might do model making for a living. And uh, but then I realized how cutthroat and crazy model making is for a living. If you want to work 24 hours a day, uh, so like, no, I don't want to work 24 hours a day. So anyway, so I think 
too, that's why I like, I like building these things. It reminds me of building models. And, uh, and uh, I have quite a shop at my house, so I can basically do anything with metal, wood, plastic. So, um, you know, I just kind of grab anything. You know, this one, I had some spare wood. I drilled these out, put the dowel through there. So this actually has everything on it. It has wood, doweling, foam, paper, wire, hot melt glue, glue everything. So tape. So I'm looking forward to finishing this one. This one I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this one with a sculpting uh, paper. So maybe there'll be a follow up in a few, <laughs> a few months when I get all these done. I don't know. So any more questions? Yeah, you know, um, I haven't, I think that would be, a, the gesso takes care of that, really. But like this puffin nose, I've noticed that when I put this paper on anything wood, all of a sudden it turned, Julie saw it at my house, it turned, uh, yeah, I don't know how to, I thought I brought a picture, it turns brown, the resins from the wood kind of leaks through this, and it looks nasty. But then once I paint it with the gesso, it never, it never leaches through the gesso. Yeah, but I put a lot of gesso on it. Right. Magic stuff. Yeah, so. Gesso's great. Yeah. Uh oh. Wait. <laughs> uh, so, what else? Well, well, I think we can get started and then we can just talk some more. So, um, I think this might end our recorded part of the, of the session because we're going to break out and do some work. So, um, this video is going to be uploaded to YouTube at some point. And uh, I appreciate all your views. And come back next month. Mm -hmm. All right. What is next month? What is next month, Hadi? Uh, silk painting. Silk painting. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, we never had that. We're going to have to change our drawing. Yeah. So, um,